Father, we thank you, we praise you, that Father, indeed, you are going to do new things among our midst. And you have new things in store for us, and you always give us the best. And Father, we thank you, we praise you, in the name of Jesus, we come against all foul evil spirit, unclean, unclean spirit, we command you to go from this place and never return. In Jesus' name, Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise, and we pray that your spirit will minister to our heart, to our soul, spirit, and body, that to bring breakthroughs, to bring new increase, and to bring us abundance. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we we give you all glory, honor, all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. We pray, Amen. Well, many of us have many fears. Okay, many of us have fears over many areas. Sometimes we fear of little creatures, especially ladies. When you see the rats, wow! Immediately you will jump on the table. Or when we see cockroach, lizards, small little creatures. They are so tiny, so small, and yet we are scared of it. And most of the common things that people fear of is the fear of evil spirit, fear of taking flights, and fear of hell, fear of building relationship. And the most common one is fear of lack due to economic situations. Economic challenges are nothing new under the sun. It comes and goes, it happened in the 1930s, it ha happens in throughout ages. And there's nothing new under the sun. And it came the same to Isaac. It even happened during Abraham's time. And now it came to his sons when Isaac was there and he faced famine. Genesis 26, verse 1 to 3. Now there was a famine in the land, besides the earlier famine of Abraham's time. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king in Gerar. The Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you and will bless you. When there was a famine in the land, Isaac thought of going down south. Why? Because he... He was fearful. He was afraid of lack. And that's why he would thought of moving to down south. But God told him not to. And at the same time, the Lord gave him tremendous promises, which is the same as what the Lord had told Abraham, that the Lord, will, the Lord is going to bless him, the Lord is going to be with him. And, you know, the Lord says that, the best place is where I put you. It's the same thing that in life says, do not make hasty decisions. When we are in fear, it is easy to make poor choices and many mistakes. And sometimes it can even endanger our lives. Like Naomi, she lost everything. See, sometimes when we face, when we have fear, we always want to follow the crowds. Follow others. We think that that is the best way because since others are doing that way and then I just flow along, I feel more secure. But do not make any hasty decision out of fear. But here, seek the Lord. And God is always faithful. He always help us and protect us. Why? Because of his promises to Abraham. So we stay where we are because wherever he puts you, that is the best place. The blessing is on the man and not on the land. Therefore, wherever you go, when you are walking on the right path, the Lord is going to bless you. You see, the Lord asked Isaac to stay where he was and that was Gera. Gera is not an easy place, but... Isaac still found a place of seven wells. Wells in those days are very important because uh, you need water, especially when the place is always lack of water. Therefore, well is very important because you need water for the cattle, you need water for the human being. And Isaac not only had one well, but the Lord gave him seven wells. And the Lord will always have the best for us. You see, the Lord 
protected uh, Isaac even in tough situations, in tough places. Genesis 26, 12 to 13, that during the famine time, what did Isaac do? Isaac planted crops in that land and the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. When there was a famine, but Isaac sold and he planted crops in that land and at the same year he reaped a hundredfold. You see, sometimes when we plant things, it may not give you hundredfolds. Sometimes you may get 30 folds and sometimes you may get 60 folds of harvest. But amazingly, that Isaac have hundred folds. And the Bible says that because the Lord blessed him, where he obeyed the Lord when he listened, and that's where he got his blessing. And sometimes we thought that, oh, when I make a plan, when I want to do this, when I want to do that, then maybe ask of prayer. God, please bless me this, bless me that. But first is, you must know where the Lord puts you. When the Lord say, do this thing, or when the Lord say, stay here, and you just obey Him. And once you obey, you see that even during famine time, you are able to enjoy plenty. You are able to have hundredfolds of harvest. And He became rich. He became rich and his wealth continued to grow. It's not only rich, but continued to grow. It's not stagnant, but continuing to grow until he became very wealthy. See, when the people saw that he was very rich, they were not happy and they asked him to leave. So, Isaac left the place, but he still stayed around the area. Okay, he left the place because he was asked to leave, but he still stayed around the area. And one day in Genesis 26, 17 to uh, 19, one day as Isaac's servants were digging in the valley, they came on a well of spring water. The shepherds of Gerard quarreled with Isaac's shepherds, claiming this water is ours. The well was dug by Isaac's servant. And in those days when you when you dig a well and you are the owner of that well. But the shepherds came, the shepherds of Gerar came and claimed it to be theirs. Isaac didn't argue, but he just left to dig new wells in the same place. He just took the well and he just, no point argue, no point wasting time. And he didn't run off to the south where he wanted to earlier. He didn't take it as, oh, maybe the Lord want me to go to move to somewhere. But he just stayed around and, and moved in the same place and take a new well. And then Genesis 26, verse 21. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also. So he named it Sidna. Sidna means tough challenges. Yes, there is tough challenges, but he didn't argue again. He didn't let that make him sour in life and get stuck in resentment. Oh, I make, put in all the efforts and yet I face these challenges. And he knew it was not worth. It's not worth his a waste of time. What for argue? What? And he just go to dig another well again because he, is, he felt that it's not worth to harbour all the bitterness and all the resentment and all the complaint. And just move and just dig another well in the same place. He chose to let go and move on and not to be stuck in the situation. Amazingly, you know, not everyone you take the well, you are able to get water. Not everywhere you take the well, you are able to get water. But surprisingly, it's wherever Isaac goes, he dug the well and there's water. You can see that it's really the blessing of the Lord. And he experienced supernatural prote protection earlier on and God has protected him and Rebecca despite his mistakes. Even though he made mistakes, yet God still bless him. Sometimes you thought that, oh, I make mistakes. God will not help me. No, God is always ready to help you. God is always ready to bless you. And he trusted in God's promises. 
See, sometimes yeah, we could be working very hard in the office and we spend long hours in the office, we work very hard, but it seems that no one noticed. It seems that you got passed over the promotion. It seems that you, whatever you do, that seems that in the office, that you will just be in that position and lost your promotion. You see, sometimes we can choose to be sour and we can choose to bitter. We can complain, we can blame. Oh, the boss is not fair. My colleagues sabotage me. Oh, so and so, uh, bad mouth over me. That's why I didn't get the promotion. That's why I didn't get the increment. You see, we can choose to be sour or use the opportunity to excel ourselves. And, you know, sometimes during this time, instead of murmuring, quarreling, instead of harbour all the bitterness, perhaps that we can find, examine ourselves. How come my boss didn't appreciate? How come my boss didn't notice? You see, you must know that even when you are serving in the marketplace, you are actually not serving your boss, but you are serving God through your boss. But that doesn't give you excuses. Then I don't have to listen to my boss right? since I'm serving God in, my, in the marketplace. No, but the Lord says that you are serving God in the marketplace through your boss. You have to submit to your boss as unto the Lord. And the Lord sees and the Lord is able to reward you. That's why sometimes when we find that, how come my boss didn't uh, notice me? How come the promotions never come to me? And, you know, perhaps we can examine ourselves. Maybe we didn't catch the vision of the Lord, uh, of our boss. Maybe we do things our own way. Or maybe we feel that we put in so much effort, we do that thing. But is it what the boss wants? Just like Joab, he, he, he was very hardworking and he was a great general during King David's time. But how come he was not noticed? Because he just wanted to do things his way. He wanted to do things his way and he even manipulate and want the king to follow his way. That's why sometimes we are in such a situation we have to examine ourselves. Do not blame others. But instead, we find whether we are doing, whether we are flowing with the vision of the boss. And also at the same time, perhaps that we may, have, we may lack of certain skills that other colleagues have, but we may lack of that. Or perhaps that is our attitude problem. I only do that I was asked to do, and those things I was not asked to do, I just couldn't be bothered. Of course, you have to do what you are supposed to do, but also at the same time, maybe someone need, when in, during some rushing time that need certain helps, perhaps that after finish your, 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 the work that you are supposed to do, you can help around. Or you just couldn't be bothered. My job is nine to five. After that, even if you all cannot finish your work, I couldn't be bothered. Or sometimes, you tend to be a man pleaser. You please everyone. In, sometimes you can go into another extreme. Is we can be a man pleaser. I want to please all my colleagues. Therefore, when A asks you to do this, you help. B asks you to do this, you help. And the whole office taking you like uh, someone that ever ready for them. So they ask you to do this, ask you to do that. In the end, what you are supposed to do, you miss it. You don't need. You don't. You don't do it. You don't have the time to do it, and you don't have the time to improve yourself. Or perhaps, sometimes you may have relationship problem with your colleagues. Sometimes you always feel that this colleague is not good to me, la, that colleague is, is, is not teaching me. La, then we blame everyone. We may have relationship skill problem. Or sometimes we may know how to work as a team. We think that I want to do it, make my work to be outstanding. So I don't want to work with others because uh, one may, I, I do better than others. So might as well I do it myself rather than I work with others as a team. So, you know, this could be the way that hinder our promotion. 
So sometimes in such a situation, instead of blaming others, find ways to improve ourselves, to excel. Or sometimes that, you know, even as students, you may do the projects that you work so hard on your projects. But how come, you know, sometimes you complain, how come my lecturer is not fair? Didn't give me the marks that I'm supposed to get because I put in so much effort. But are you doing what the lecturer wants? Um, you know, sometimes we work hard in the, our study, but how we didn't get the results that we want. What should we do? Instead of blaming, complaining, and we should seek God. We should pray. And at the same time, we confess that I can do all things uh, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. But also at the same time, pray that the Lord will send someone to help you. You know, perhaps that help you if to, to explain further so that you are able to understand. And also at the same time, pray for wisdom. When the exam comes, ask the Lord for wisdom how to answer the question. Because some questions are not so direct. You know, some question is not A or B, but sometimes that you need to give a bit more in, in, in your answer. So that's why ask God for wisdom, even in, the stud, in your studies. Or sometimes even in relationship, let's say husband and wife relationship, you put in your effort, but somehow that your spouse just don't appreciate. So what should you do? Instead of complaining about your spouse, tell the whole world what your spouse have done and how your spouse have hurt you. And why not just come to the Lord? Is there ways that I need to improve? Or maybe, you know, we need to improve in our communication. Maybe we need to have areas or perhaps you need counselling. But if you are not married, okay, if you are not married, so... You know, don't get yourself stuck in a relationship when you always quarrel with your boyfriends or girlfriends. You know, and you always feel insecure over your relationship. You know, if your boyfriends and girlfriends and every time you are meet and every time you are quarrel, then it could be a red light from the Lord. Is it from the Lord? Even though you say, oh, pastor, that is a Christian. Yeah, but doesn't mean that any Christian can be your husband or, or can be your wife, Right? You have to pray whether that is of the Lord. If it's not of the Lord, you have must learn to let go. Let go earlier of that unhealthy relationship. Rather than you keep on drag one year, two years, three years, in the end, ah, no choice, lah, I've been going for so long. So that might not be because of the uh, society pressure, then I have to marry the person. No. It's, it's good that, you know, learn how to how to say in certain situations that you must learn to let go. No matter how, don't start in the situation. When you have marriage problem, find ways. Perhaps, yes, it may not be your fault. It may be, you know, it's the other person. But since you are in the marriage relationship, learn to find ways to improve, okay, to enrich your marriage. Yes, perhaps it's the other person's fault, but doesn't mean that, okay, I just be in a passive way or I just, you know, divorce. Lah. That is the solution. Don't find a shortcut. There's no shortcut. Yes, there may be relationship problem. There may be broken down in communication. But I believe the Lord will always have the best way to help you to enjoy your marriage life. It continue to hold on. Who knows that the person one day will come back to you. And your spouse will find that you are still the best. So do not harbor all those, do not let, let those negative uh, emotions that, that stuck you in the situation. Learn to let go. And to some people, especially like I say that if you need to let, if you are not married, you need to let go of the unhealthy relationship. Some people may, may ask, Pastor, what if I miss this opportunity? What if I miss these opportunities and I may not have another one? But let me tell you this. If you are stuck in that unhealthy relationship, you may miss the best of what God has for you. You see, you, you can be sure that God will always have the best for you in the same place. 
do not always think that you know, the grass in another place is much more better than here. But the Lord will always have the best for you in the same place. The Lord do not need to relocate you to another place and only can bless you. Because the blessing is on the man and not on the land. So, you see, Isaac taught the land down south, but the Lord have better plans for him. And when you seek God first, you will let no good things. You will let no good things. And that's why let go of negative mentality or attitudes. Let go of negative thoughts, our mouth. Let go of negative emotions, the bitterness, the, the sour, the pitiful, self-pity emotions, and let go of negative thoughts, our mind, our mind. People can see your appearance, but people cannot see your mind, but God can see. Let go of your negative thoughts. Once our thoughts is negative, we can confine ourselves in a place. We can confine ourselves in a small room. You know, sometimes we think that when you are in a small room, we feel oh, we are confined in that small room, we cannot move. But you see, sometimes it's our hearts that we confine ourselves in by our negative thoughts. That's why it's very important that to be careful not to listen to negative thoughts, not to listen, not to have negative thoughts, and also at the same time, our mouth don't speak the negative. Don't speak the negative. You see, you can say that, oh, then why did Isaac name the well in a negative way? Because you find that since it's negative, I don't want to look back. I just want to, I just want to dig another well. I don't want to look back. So it's the same way. Don't look back. Don't look back. Of course, I know some hurtful situation may on and off come to your heart. Sometimes you feel that someone like <sighs> pinching you. The hurts, but learn to let go. And when you have that feeling, what should you do? Focus on what the Lord has for you. Instead of drowning in it. I know that you cannot avoid, right? Sometimes the negative thoughts just come into, in, in, into your mind. But you, you, you cannot avoid. But somehow, you can avoid from drowning in it. Do not keep on thinking about it. But put in the positive words that the Lord has for you. Focus on those promises that the Lord has for you. Focus on the great increase. Just see, in great opportunity, even in tough places. Genesis 26, verse 3. Dwell in this land and I will be with you and bless you. For to you and your descendants I give all these lands and I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham your father. You see, since the Lord had promised uh, Jacob and, and asked him to stay in the land and so no point that he keep on moving relocate himself you see Genesis uh, 26 22, 22 says that you know after two encounter with tough situation and what did Isaac do 26, 22 abandoning that well Isaac moved on and dug another well this time there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space. For he said, At last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. Rehoboth means broad, wide places. Make rooms open wide. It's an open place. It's a wide place. You know, once you are in, in the open space, you feel more free. You feel more easy to move around. And Isaac, he abandoned the well, the, the past negative, he abandoned, he just let go and he just moved forward. And, you know, if he got stuck, he's not able to find a place that which no one come and fight with him. He's not able to see the opportunity if he just dwell in the past bad experience past hurtful experience he's not able to see there is a better place there is a better well for him that in the same place but there is a well for him that which 
I have flowed with water and no white. No, no one fight with it. You see, he says that he named this place, place Rehoboam. Why? Because he said, the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper. The Lord has created enough place for us to prosper or to make rooms for us to prosper. You see, I like the, this message translation. It's a created Created. Why? Why is creation come up from nothing, right? That means if there's nothing, the Lord is able to create something for you, just for you alone. So He created enough space for us. And the Lord always make room for you. Why? Because of His promises to Abraham. He can, just like Red Sea, you know, when, when God's people come to the Red Sea, but the Lord is able to open a Red Sea for you. You see, God can bless you even in imperfect situation. When God bless you, even in tough places, it becomes a broad, wide place. In the same place, those shepherds can come and still claim, but they didn't. Because God is able to make an imperfect place, an imperfect situation to become a broad, wide place. And God can give you, can create new connections. Even if you have no connections, God is able to create new connections for you. Even when there is no opportunity, the Lord can create a new opportunities for you. Can perhaps just create a job just for you, a position just for you. The Lord can create a new door for you even if you don't see any door. But suddenly, you just see a door is just open for you. Just like your bulletin, can we see this uh, uh, testimony from this person? Uh, the first testimony. Awesome record-breaking favour. Dear Pastor Joshua and Pastor Carrie, I would like to share some good news. My MD noticed that I had many days of annual leave not utilised in 2014. He allowed me to carry forward all my leave to the next year as well as convert 10 days of leave to cash with EPF. It is truly a record-breaking breakthrough to me because the company's SOP is to forfeit all leave. Also, there is no such back pay leave policy, but my MD allowed these special benefits only for me. Praise the Lord. Pastor, thanks for your prayers and sermons. God bless you and your family. As this person shared that there's no such thing in a company that you can convert the leave to be cash or, and, and to bring forward the leave to another year. But somehow, the Lord just did for her. You see, the Lord is able to create uh, such blessing for her. And there's this testimony that the person that apply loans. There's this person that he uh, apply loans and somehow that he just got a one-year interest-free loan. He just got it. It never happened in his life before. You see, the Lord is able to do great things, create new opportunities and give you blessings, give you abundance. Therefore, do not get stuck. Do not look at the negative, do not look at all the negative thoughts, read all the negative things, but put your focus on the Lord. See great opportunities even in tough places. And you know, I just felt this morning that the Lord is saying to many of us, see the new opportunities the Lord has for you. Do not see that oh yeah, everything, you know, so Namala, just leave it like that lah. But the Lord has new opportunities for you, new opening for you. And do not look at, do not get stuck, but look at what the Lord has for you. You see, when Isaac wasn't stuck in that situation, and the Lord has blessed you, blessed him. Genesis 26, 23. From there he went up to Beersheba. That night the Lord appeared to him and said, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid. For I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. 
There he pitched his tent, and there his servants dug a well. Bathsheba is within the land of promise, the land where Abraham dwells. And Isaac worshipped the Lord. Worshipped the Lord by what? Building an altar, giving thanks, giving thanks to the Lord for what he has done. So focus, focus on him, and you are able to see great things that the Lord has prepared for you. And after Isaac had given thanks to the Lord and he had built God the altar, the people that caused him problem saw the blessing of the Lord is upon him. Genesis 26, 28. We can plainly see that the Lord is with you. So we want to enter into a sworn treaty with you. Let's make a covenant. You see, when the blessing of the Lord is upon you, even Abimelech, even the people who oppose you, they are able to see it and they know they cannot come against you. And it's the same way that this supposed to be people who oppose Isaac, but in the end, they became friends. Isaac didn't start in the situation. He didn't start with bitterness and sour, but instead, he made them a feast. He let go. He made them a feast. He let go and focus on what God has for him. God has greater things for you. So do not start with all the negative thoughts, all the murmuring, all the grumbling, and also to listen to all the negative thoughts or to fill your mind with all the negative uh, thinking. But focus on the Lord so that you will not be robbed of your own blessing. No one can rob your blessing, only you yourself, if you confine yourself with all the negative thoughts. And Genesis 26, 32. Now it came about on the same day that Isaac's servants came in and told him about the well which they had dug and said to him, We have found water. So he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Bathsheba to this day. When the blessing of the Lord is upon you, people around you are able to notice. People around you are able to see it. You know, perhaps you go to a shop. Earlier on, there's no one there. But once you enter, somehow you find that, hey, how come suddenly so many people? Right? It's the same as, or maybe you go to a restaurant, you see there's no people around. But as you sit down, hey, how come suddenly so many people come? Somehow, People is able to notice. People are able to notice that the blessing is on you. It's not your own effort. But because wherever we go, the Lord has what the Lord has promised Abraham that the Lord is going to bless his descendants. And because of us, people surround us, they are able to see. It. They are able to see. It. And it's not our own effort, but his. You see, on the same day that after Isaac had become friends of Abimelech, and on the same day, the, the servant, his servant found that the well that had dug earlier and now flow with water. Is it not every time you dig a well, sure there is water? No. But it's not by coincidence, he said, on the same day. You see, when Isaac learned to let go, and not to be stuck. And the, he can see that the Lord bless him with great abundance. Belsheba means seven wells. Or perhaps that is seven promises. Or these words also can say that is repeating a declaration seven times. God, he himself, seven times declare to bless us. Seven times of decoration of God. And God's blessing is upon us. So no point we look back. But look at the new opportunity that the Lord has for you. Today we are sure that we can be blessed. We have that assurance. Hebrews 8 verse 6. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry. By as much as he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which has been enacted on better promises. And because of what Jesus Christ has done on the cross, we are able to receive great blessing because of Jesus and to, through his poverty that make us 
rich. Because he became poor, so that we become rich. The Bible tells us that Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. And there he pitched his tent. And there his servant dug a well. And after that, Abimelech never come and fill up the well again. Why? I believe, number one, Isaac worship, put his focus on God. All right? That's the reason why this October month is a season of praise and prayer. In your prayer, whatever area, don't tell God what to do. You got to do this, you got to do that. Like Isaac, oh, I want to go south. God said, no. <laughs> All right? Stay where you are, where God has placed you. Worship. Because He's God. The best prayer is praise. And then you just pray in tongues. Don't tell God, you got to do this, you got to do that. All right? So focus on three items, just praise, pray in tongues. All right? And uh, as you go to praise, you will see that God is going to do astounding work. And uh, Isaac built that altar. I believe it's also giving testimony as you give glory to God that, wow, man, the blessed you, God is God. The people of the world will look at you and say, hey, I better don't touch that guy because God is with him. And wow. They dug on the very same day. Bel Sheba, seven wells. The root word is seven promises or seven declarations. Well, the key thing is building the altar, the greatest altar you can Worship, act, and give testimony is the altar of a sacrifice for you. You know that God loves you so much, so much, so much. He came down in human form. The Son of God. What does that mean? It simply means the only one in world history that have the very gene of God. He came for one purpose, to take on Him, His body, the destructiveness of sin. He hates sin. He loves you. In fact, that He came down. He loves you. But He hates it because He knows that sin can destroy you, your life, your relationship. But He loves you so much, He cannot bear to see you suffering in that destruction that sin caused. He gave up His life. He died. You know why? He loves you. He wants to bear all your burdens, all your misery, all your pain. You say, Pastor, I want to know more about Jesus. I want to receive what He has done. I would love to pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for sending Jesus Christ to die for me on the cross. You took the destruction, the penalty that I deserve, that I may receive what Jesus Christ deserves. Thank you for loving me so much, willing to die for me. Thank you, for Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you have said that prayer and want to know more or have any feedbacks, please write to us. 